So I have to start with some disclaimers. And the first one is this is not financial advice. And the second is a disclosure. I have $154 in Bitcoin currently. And the reasoning behind that is that I actually mined it on this machine back here. And the reason I did is because when I bought this house, it had a really old heating and air conditioning system and it was a resistive heater. So what a resistive heater basically does is it puts electricity through coils to heat the house. This is incredibly inefficient. And what I decided is that if I'm gonna put electricity through something, I might as well make it go through something that can also generate Bitcoin. Why not at that point? So beyond that, I am looking at this through the eyes of somebody who looks at things practically. And if you don't like that, this might not be the video for you. I'm not looking at the world as I like it to be. I'm looking at the world as it is. And perhaps the world could be better, but it's not. So let's move on. Let's look at this image. What do you think of the things that you see? Some of these are companies that were supposed to be big and they turned out to be like, okay. Some of them were companies that, you know, they just got crashed by a scandal. Some of these things are things that should have happened or could have happened that didn't happen. And some of them were just fads. So let's look at another picture. And this is actually one from the 1960s. You may notice the big picture here is something that was completely ludicrous. Something that wouldn't work today and doesn't even make any sense as a concept. If you go to the bottom right, you see something that we would want. We sort of still do want, but isn't really you know set out to become a reality. But if you look in the bottom left, you see something that's actually sort of true. This is sort of how time and ideas work. Now, you may be saying, hey Mark, cryptocurrencies have gone a long way and people widely accept them as good investments. We have entire companies that are willing to set up things around cryptocurrency. This can't be nothing. And I'm not saying it is nothing. I'm saying that it might not go any further than it is. And my first criticism would be this, the system of governance. Again, I don't agree with the world we have. I just know the world that we have. And I don't believe that our governments are not going to try to do something with this. It's not like they haven't done something like that before. And seeing a competing currency with that, uh, that seems like something they would sort of have a problem with. So there's a, you know, kind of a thing about that. There's a thing called FedCoin that's coming out now. And I really don't think this is going to be good, but do you really think the alternative is going to be good, which is just a democratized system, which I know is what Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are sold on. The idea that people just controlling the money is a good thing sounds really good, but we've had a lot of things that sounded really good in history that weren't really good. And if they turn out to not be really good, hopefully they get squashed. And what I'm worried about with cryptocurrency is let's say we were to move forward with this system and it turns out it really sucks. I mean, direct democracy is an idea of something that was supposed to be really good. Turned out not so much. And I'm worried the same type of thing could happen. Beyond that, what if it turns out into a corporatized type of democracy where companies actually are controlling the money here? I think that might not be good. I don't know how you feel about that, but I've already seen there are companies that are buying up these Bitcoin nodes. And again, Bitcoin is not all that I'm focusing on, but yeah, that might not be good. Beyond that, let's talk about energy use that honestly, I know this is something that's come up and I think Tesla brought it up, which brings me back to the idea of corporatization that Bitcoin bought a bunch of this stuff with money that they had said it was great, you're gonna be able to buy Teslas with it, and then all of a sudden they said it sucks. At the same time, they sold a bunch of it, like a pump and dump scheme. And basically, the problem is the way it works. And I know there's no better way of doing this, that if you ask me what's a better way, I can't come up with a better way. But the way this works is we hash data, basically. And what I mean by hash is we take some data and we convert it to 
something that you can't recognize. Now, you might think, Mark, that's encryption, but not exactly. Encryption is when you do the same thing, but you can bring it back with a key and, and so on. But with a hashing algorithm, you basically are turning it into an unrecognizable piece of data that can't be duplicated. And you're saying, here, here it is, basically. Now, we do this with passwords, actually. When we uh, store passwords, we hash and salt them, is what it's called. And that means that you take a password and you convert it to something that can't be recognized, that's something that can't be duplicated, and nobody can actually reverse it, at least not easily. Now, the reason that we do this is because it makes no sense for us to keep it in a way that can be pulled back out. That only leads leaves a security hole for people to be able to do that. So if you ever have a company that says, hey, here's your password, go like be a customer somewhere else because they are not storing your passwords correctly. You know, beyond that, moving on, we have these hashes and the way that we sell this stuff, you know, Bitcoin, how do you get Bitcoin? is that you use your computer power, like this thing behind me. This is a pretty powerful computer. And what we do is we say, hey computer, try to solve this algorithm. And we get a bunch of these computers together and they use a bunch of electricity to try to solve that hash algorithm. As I said, when I mined my stuff, it was sort of okay because I was using a resistive heater downstairs. And that was just running electricity through wires in order to give me heat. I might as well mine something while I'm at it. But when it comes to most like people situations, the idea of just burning this computer power, burning this energy to get these hashes solved that do, do, you know, do nothing for society uh, other than just give you a Bitcoin or whatever coin that you're mining, that's not a great idea. And, it's basically that you're you're using fuels, whether they be fossil or whatever that you are using based on where you live, to get something that is a currency. That doesn't sound good to me. And, you know, I hate to say it, but it's the truth. And the thing is, the argument against it is, well, what how how else would you sell this to people? How else would you give it out, right? And that is a good question, and I don't have a better answer. But this, you know, this ain't great. Now, the last thing is the biggest one I worry about, which is there's just gonna be a lack of trust in the system. I've talked to a lot of people that are like, why would I put my money in Bitcoin? Like, I don't really trust that. I, I trust, you know, US government money more. I'd rather have it in dollars or in stocks somewhere. I don't really trust this. And one of the problems with Bitcoin is it's not easy to make transactions. See, the way that transactions work is basically the miners, like this machine back here, have to do it. But they're not gonna do it if they can just mine easier. They're gonna just mine. So what you have to do is put up a percentage of your transaction to make that transaction happen. And even then, it doesn't happen at a considerable pace. Now, there are some solutions being worked for this, but it's still not great. And the lack of trust that I could see is, how are you gonna get over that? that that's my question. How are you going to get people to believe that this new cryptocurrency, when there are a ton of them, that's the way to go, right? This is the way we keep our money unless you can convince people that, hey, this is what our money should be, is there any point in putting a lot of investment into it? I don't see it. Because if you don't, you're just going to kind of sit at a level that I think that's where we are with cryptocurrency now. That it, it's just gonna keep like being an investment and something people put money into or don't put money into, it's gonna go up, it's gonna drop. But I don't see it as, you know, the same as the stock market where there's actually companies behind it. I'm sorry. And hey, I know this is going to get some hate for me. Uh, fine. That, that's, that's okay with me. I, I do have money in cryptocurrency. I have not sold the Bitcoin I mined. I could have done that, uh, but I didn't. 
I'm gonna hold on to it and see what happens. You know, I'm not saying this is a bad thing to play around with, it's, it's not. But if you are thinking you're gonna put your money into Bitcoin or Dogecoin or some new type of coin, and that's gonna make you rich, I'm gonna tell you something that you probably don't wanna hear. You're not gonna be rich. And that's statistically true, unfortunately that most of us are not gonna be rich. And I, when I say most, I mean the overwhelming majority of us. If you're watching this video and you are saying, I am gonna be rich based on this idea, I am very sorry. You're not, it's not gonna happen, my friend. You, but you know, you might get a decent standard of living. I'm not saying you won't do okay, but the, the facts are you're just not gonna make it. It's not a big deal. You have to be super lucky to get there. And honestly, what you can have, you know, beyond that is, is good enough. Honestly, what I have behind me is way more than good enough for me. But don't get hooked on these scams because there are a lot of people that are saying, hey, there's, there's this new cryptocurrency and you should buy into it because it's going to make you a lot of money. And they're doing a pump and dump scheme. Don't buy into it. This is not something that you want to fall for because honestly, I think this technology may have peaked. I'm sorry to say that, but I think that's what's going on. Now, I'm not saying don't get into it in any way. If you think it's cool at a technical level, go ahead and do it. Blockchain itself is pretty neat and may have other applications other than just money. And Beyond that, I don't want to dissuade you from getting into new technologies in general because they can be pretty cool. So, okay. Hope you guys like this. I think I'm going to have a lot of people that don't. Have a good night.